In this step, we will do the registration part. We will create a simple page where we will create input fields to get the username, email, and password. Then we will call our API, which we develop in Node.js. That API will save the entire data in MongoDB. Before saving the data in MongoDB, we will encrypt the plain text password into a hash string. So even if someone gets access to your database, he still be unable to know the password of your users. If you prefer a text-based tutorial of this video, you can visit this link. First, in your components folder, create a file named registerComponent.view. We need to import our components in main.js because in main.js we are setting the routes. And register component will only be displayed when a slash register route is accessed in the browser. And create a new object element in routes array. It will have path key that will tell which URL should access and component property that tells the component that needs to be rendered. When you click on register link, it is displaying the register component. But since our register component is empty, so we do not see any change. So we are already displaying app header and app footer and between them the router view. And our every other component which we put in routes will be displayed in place of router view tag. In your register component, create a template tag and a container. Create a form for registration and create an input field for name. and an input field for email and an input field for password get start must be password and a submit button right now leave the script tag will only export default statement so you will see your register page you will not see it on any other link because we have registered it on slash register out only then in your form tag, add a submit event listener that will be called when the form is submitted. We will be using the on submit event because it allows us to call the Vue.js method. It also has an attribute prevent. This will prevent the form from submitting. This is equivalent to the vanilla JavaScript event dot prevent default method. And in submit button, we will display the text loading when the form is submitted. And when the response is received from the server, then we will change it back to the register. In order to do that, we need to bind the value attribute to the Vue.js and put a condition that if the variable is loading is true, then we display the text loading. And when this variable's value is false, then we set the value as a register. And we also disable the input type submit when this variable's value is true. So when the form is submitted, the submit button will be disabled until the response is received from server. So now we just need to create a function that sends an AJAX to the Node.js server. To send an AJAX from Vue.js app, we need a module named Exeuse. So open terminal in the folder and run the command npm install Exeuse. And we will also be installing a library called Suite Alert 2 to display pop-up alerts and confirmation dialogs. Once installed, run the app again. And in your register component, import both modules. Then we need to create global variables. In Vue.js, global properties are used to access a certain variable anywhere in the app. Global properties can be accessed in any component. 
we can create global properties in main.js file after the app uses routing we do app.config.globalproperties.name of our variable which is main url and its value this holds the value of frontend another variable named api url and it holds the value of backend url In export default create a data object and it will return all the variables we will be using in this component add a methods object where we will create all our methods used in this component we only have one method do register it will be an asynchronous function because when an ajax is called we will wait until its response is received get the form using event target and create a form data object from this form Set the is loading to true. As soon as it is set to true, the submit button value becomes loading and it will get disabled. Then we call an ajax. We set the statement await. This keyword will wait for this command until it is finished. Axios.post method calls the ajax request with method as post. First parameter will be the API path. Write the base path from variable and slash registration. Second parameter will be the values that needs to be sent with this object. So we are sending our form data object, then set the is loading to false. Then display the pop up alert and show the response received from the API. The API will also return the status. If the status is success, then we are resetting the form. Fill the form now and hit submit. You will see an error that the origin has been blocked by CORS. It is because our frontend and API are not on same server. We can remove this error by opening API slash server.js and before the http.listen, you need to add the node.js built-in middleware that will allow request from this server. We will be setting CORS headers. And finally, the next function will continue the request. Now we will see the 404 error because we haven't created this API endpoint yet. So let's create this API. When the database is successfully connected, but first we need to install a module named Express Formidable. This is helpful because it parses the incoming values from form data object. It parses input fields and files. And start the server again. Then include this module in server.js. Set its instance as a middleware. We mentioned earlier that we will be converting plain text password into encrypted strings. To do that, we will be using a module called bcrypt. So, install that module using npm install bcrypt. And start the server again. Then include that module. Finally, create an API. That this will be a post method. 
the endpoint is registration it will be asynchronous because we will wait during queuing on mongodb first parameter will be request and it will have all the input fields from client's form and second will be register it is used to send response back to the client get all the values from input fields get the current timestamp make sure all values are set then check if that email already exists and encrypt the plain text password its callback will have an error if there is any and hash string then we will insert the document in mongodb users collection name email password make sure it will be hashed one not the plain text access token this will be used during login contact list and the time user was created and finally we will send the response back to the client now if you fill the form and hit submit you will see a success pop up and refresh your mongodb compass you will see your database has been created and users collection has been created as well and inside it a new document is inserted i am going to create another user from other browser refresh and now you will see two documents in the next tutorial we will do the login part